One of my friends just uh, one of my friends just called me and said, "I've just been listening to you on Spotify," and uh, of course I'm you know I'm just I'm chuffed to bits because I thought he was going to say, you know, he'd been listening to some of my solo material, um, and then he was going to expand upon it and tell me how wonderful he thought it was and how great I am, and I could just feel my head about to swell a little, and, and he said, "No, no, no, you remember that band you were in." years ago uh raven lord it's on spotify and i've just been just been listening to it in car and um and sure enough here we are <laughs> raven lord on spotify uh here we go look there's the album cover descent to the underworld by raven lord so i'm not even sure if i could have told you the title of the album um if I wasn't reading it off Spotify, I, this is something that I'd sort of, I'm ashamed to say, I'd sort of forgotten all about. Um, there's some great tracks on this album. I particularly liked um, Black Friar. Yeah, it probably just sounds rubbish playing off my phone and being recorded on a iPad uh, microphone. But um, yeah, um, Attila the Horn I really liked, and um, Sun God, Seal of the Cross. Do you know I um, what it was this band um, when I was when I was working for Tony Martin. Um, I was I was in Tony Martin's uh, Tony Martin from Black Sabbath. I, w I was in his um, touring band for several years, and so when I did that, um, this guy noticed me. Um, this guy um, who was putting together Raven Lord, the singer. It was it was his baby, and to be fair to him, he put the vast majority of the, of the work into it, and. Um, yeah, so he, he'd noticed me online, working for Tony, and he'd seen me on YouTube, he'd read my website, and he decided to ask me if I wanted to be involved in Raven Lord. And um, I was a little concerned at first because his idea was uh, to put this band together for uh, sort of hand-picked members from um, different name things, people from all over the world. Um, we had a guitar player, I think it was from Sweden. I think Chabu was in, uh, the singer was in Spain. Um, there were various, various different people involved at different times. Uh, there was a guy from Brazil. Um, I forget now. Uh, we ended up with an American guitarist called Joe Stump. But that was after the first album. Um, yeah, sorry, it's all just all just sort of coming, just rushing back to me. Um, yeah, so I was a little concerned because, I, you know, how are we going to get in a rehearsal room together? How are we going to make a record like this? Um, but what we did, we, we did it through file sharing. So we'd, um, we'd uh, put down bits of music, bits of riffs and stuff, and, and share them to an online folder, a secret folder. Um, the singer would take the riffs and... Uh, chop them about and see what he could make out of them and he would construct um, uh, melody lines and write lyrics uh, which he did do a phenomenal job of I have to say and um, and it was it was fascinating to be part of and sometimes I felt a little guilty because sometimes I struggled to commit as much time to it as I'd like to but we did end up with a fabulous sounding um, album that is classed as power metal, uh, which got amazing reviews. It got loads and loads of fantastic reviews. Um, and um, so, you know, the, so up to that point, although it seemed like a slow process, I think we, we did an incredible thing together, even though we never met. And... Uh, and so we we went straight into recording a, another album afterwards the problem of course was for me 
um, the the band had a strict formula, which wasn't my idea. I suppose, see, I'm not really. A, uh, I love my rock music. I like heavy music, but I'm not really sort of an extreme metal guy. Power metal's not really my number one thing, although I don't dislike it. But I like lots and lots of things. I like variety, and. Um, my own music is kind of um, mainly because the kind of voice I have is kind of light, it's quite melodic, it's um, quite, quite a lot of it's sort of acoustic based and stuff. And so the following that I made, um, or the people that are aware of me because of having worked with names like Tony Martin and Saxon and, and so on, um, my music probably doesn't do an awful lot for those people, if we're honest. So when I got the offer to do Raven Lord, I thought, this is something that I could do that would probably be interesting to those people. And that could work well for me. Um, so, and I guess, you know, for a short time it did. But for me, the formula was very rigid. When we got to the second album, um, I started wanting to contribute a lot more musically. But my ideas were too left field or too experimental or just not right for that formula that they had in mind for the band. And a lot of arguing um, was going on in the band. You would think that it would be impossible for a band to argue right if you never actually meet. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. There was a lot of bickering going on. Very little which involved me, I have to say. Um, but I would never... I would never you know, dish any, day, any dirt on anyone or, or name names um, or say what happened. I just, I'm not the kind of person that would do that, Bob. But it was dragging me down a little bit. Um, and, you know, the, the band had become a bit of a revolving door of musicians. There was an awful lot of people in and out of that band. And, um, and so I decided early on in the um, writing of the second album that it was time for me to go out that revolving door as well and um, and I I kind of I, I didn't I never regretted it but obviously when you leave something like you know when you're getting great reviews in magazines um, you always sort of think you know I'm going to regret this you know and I suppose if like a couple of years on from there if they'd been headlining Bang Your Head Festival or Sweden Rock, then I might have been kicking myself a bit. But that didn't happen. I think, as far as I know, I think they made an, they did make a second album because it's on here actually. I noticed that. We released Descent to the Underworld in 2013 and in 2016 they released a record called Down the Wasteland, which I've never heard. But I will check that out. Um, so yeah, it's just. It's really um, fascinating and, and quite exciting for me to see that that's on Spotify. I don't suppose I'll get much, well, I don't suppose I'll get any money out of that because uh, uh, from Spotify plays, I, I get virtually nothing for my music. It's probably not even worth losing any sleep over. It's just, I suppose it's just really nice that it's there. It's something that I did that I'm glad I did. It was um, an experience, and I learned a certain amount of things from it. But I think it was the last thing that I did from a creative point of view, where I got involved with a bunch of people um, to write something where it wasn't really true to me. And um, I think what I've found in music really is that is that whilst I'm perfectly capable of writing music to order because I do that you know I, I do stuff for um, you know um, commercial music royalty free music I've got some music that was written specially for a film and and, um, and various things um, that I've sold over the last few years and um, where I write a specific piece of music um, to suit a certain thing. 
I'm perfectly capable of doing that. But, you know, when it comes to, like, writing songs and stuff, really, I just want to write what... I want to write stuff that I like, and I just hope that someone else likes it. And that way, it's, it's coming from a very genuine, sincere place. And um, And if it doesn't make, like any money at all at least um from an artistic point of view it was it was worthwhile and satisfying um so you know from that point of view in a sense maybe i should never have joined raven lord in the first place but i am on this album which i'm very proud of and there's some quite challenging bass parts on there which um i may uh, just have a listen to on my way to my gig tonight so um, that feels like that was just an utter ramble and probably isn't actually interesting to anyone at all. Um, so, never mind. Check out, check out Attila the Harness, nothing else. See you later.